Welcome to this Cinema 4D tutorial. I'm Jesse, and in this tutorial we will have a look at the Explosion FX Deformer. You'll notice there's an Explosion Deformer. I'm going to focus on Explosion FX because this one has a few more options and is thus a bit more useful. So I'm going to click that, and the thing that I'm going to explode is a bit of text for change, and I'm going to write something profound and that will be text. Really boring. I'm just going to keep it all caps because I feel like that might be a little more interesting. And let's extrude that. And let's see, caps. And I'm going to change the n-gons to see triangles, I think, that might work a little better. This way our caps aren't just one object, they're subdivided. The reason I'm doing this is so that there's more stuff to explode later on. The explosion effects tab will work based on the subdivision of our object. So now that I have my object all ready to explode, I can drag the explosion effects into the object. And whoops, actually, I take that back. I have to make the object editable so that it's actually a regular object. I apologize about that. And I'm going to make it one object just for convenience. All right, now we can drag our explosion effects into the object. And we see right away, things are kind of exploded. So we'll notice right away with the explosion effects, we have three kind of spheres. They're just kind of the skeleton outlines of the spheres, but we have this red, this green, and the blue. They do not mean anything with X, Y, and Z. The red sphere here, which I can control right here, is the blast kind of the radius, where everything inside the red sphere gets exploded, so to speak. So I'm going to drag this sphere, sphere, I can't speak at all today, outside the text. Now, I also don't want the text exploded, quite yet. And to fix this is the green sphere. The green sphere is kind of the explosion time. I'll show you how to mod this in number form later, but I'm just going to keep this kind of low. The blue sphere here on the very outside is the kind of the blast extent, how far out everything goes. And right now we have a fall off set to zero, so everything continues out after the blue sphere. All right, so let's go into the explosion effects attributes. And the first thing that it shows you is this time. The time is the green thingy. So you can see as I drag it up, uh, everything explodes. As I drag it down, uh, everything goes back to normal. So what I'm going to do is set it to zero, and I'm going to go ahead and make an animation out of this, just so that I don't have to readjust this every time I want to show you something. So to do this, what you can do is command click on this circle, or right click and go to animation, add keyframe. And then we can drag our animation, say maybe up 50 frames. And that looks pretty good. So let's just make it 30 for a nice whole number and add a keyframe, keyframe or command click. It might be on Windows uh, control click because command and control kind of always switch between Windows and Mac, but on the Mac it's command click. So now we have a nice animation, kind of slow, but that's all right for me. All right, next to the object, we have the explosion tab. This is kind of the basic information of your explosion. You have the strength, how strong the explosion itself is. If I take this down a ton, you'll see it will probably just fall apart. Yeah, so we have gravity set into it by default, which is another nice feature of explosion effects. Regular explosion deformer doesn't have all of these features. So I'm going to change the strength back to a thousand. That's pretty good. Decay, how quickly the strength decays after a while. I'm going to leave all of this as is. The one thing we might change later on is the direction. So for example, if I choose only X, let me zoom out here just so we can see, and click play, it'll explode only in the X direction. But if I choose all and click play, we can see it's still kind of centered around the X, but things spread out to the sides as well. So cluster, clustering is, if I click play, you'll notice that there are little clusters of objects. So kind of you can think of each subdivision as a separate object. And so each one is its own cluster. And so this kind of shows you how the thickness of the cluster, the, the density variation. So the thickness is one thing I want to change. You'll notice that every object exploding is really thick. So I'm going to change the thickness down to two. And you'll notice right away everything becomes significantly thinner. If I go maybe around frame 10 or so, 14, 
we can see how thin they've become. And the variation, if we want to uh, change the variation of the thickness itself, so some are thicker, some are uh, thinner. The density, if I change this all the way down to zero, basically what you have is almost like no weight to the object. So click play and things just kind of go flying out into the middle of nowhere. So density at, uh, I believe it was a thousand, was pretty comfortable for me. Then you have types of clusters, which I'm not going to play with at the moment. Then you have the min and max polygons. This is, so if I explode it a little bit, you'll see that we have kind of one, two, three, four, five polygons here. So this is the minimum size of the cluster. I want to change this to one and maybe maximum of five. This gives us smaller pieces that fly off. Another thing you'll notice is as it's exploding, there's some pieces that just remain really big. That's because the object itself is still pretty big. So one way we can fix this is if I go to extrude NURBS and let's say go to faces mode. Whoops, I did not mean to drag that. And click your keyboard shortcut K. This brings up the knife tool. Deselect visible only and deselect create engons. And then just cut your object up a bit. This will make your object into smaller pieces, breaks it apart and gives it kind of a more destructible look in the long run. So I'm just going to make random cuts throughout everything to kind of break it apart. And now if I click play, whoops, I actually have to go back to object mode. If I click play and let's zoom back to on frame 14, you'll notice everything's significantly smaller pieces. I'll play that again. There you go. In fact, we might even want to change the density up a bit. So maybe 3000 won't really change too much, but you'll notice that the pieces don't go flying off quite as quickly. And then finally you have gravity. Gravity is the thing that causes these to fall down after a while. This is a nice feature of explosion FX that also doesn't exist in explosion. And gravity by default is set to about Earth's gravity 9.81 in the negative Y direction. So you can change the direction here and you can change the amount. So I'm going to set this to zero just for an effect that I have in mind. And what we're going to do is change the explosion direction into X only. And then just for fun, I'm going to swap the two keyframes. So you notice I'm dragging these little icons. What you can do also is simply change the time. So explosion time under object. So start with the big number and end with a small number. And what this will do is make it seem like I'm creating text out of all these little pieces like that. Wham. It looks pretty cool. And then you can add your own kind of stuff to it, like let's say a spotlight, maybe. Let's rotate this. And make it look kind of cool by adding visible volumetric light. So here I'm just kind of giving you an idea of something fun to do. You don't really have to do this. And so if I render this, okay, that that doesn't really look too good yet. If I drag it out some, there we go. And then you can just run an animation where all the text is combining right in front of this bright light and it all looks cool and fancy and shiny. But that's basically all there is to explosion effects. You basically have an explosion and the really neat thing about it is that it has gravity. Whereas I'll show you just briefly explosion. If I drag this into the extrude nerves and take this one out. Explosion has the strength feature. Uh, so let's make it a hundred. Let's see, I think this is animated. Nope. Okay. I ha actually have to animate this. So you notice how explosion works set differently. Regular explosion, it'll just separate all the little uh, polygons that I cut up and send them out at a certain speed, at a certain angle speed, and some randomness down here. There's no gravity, there's nothing else to it. Explosion effects is just a little fancier, that's all. And you also have, I actually almost forgot to mention this, rotation. Rotation is just kind of cool to give it a little more variety, so you'll notice other pieces don't rotate. So if I give it a rotation speed, so something like this, uh, it might be a little fast, but yeah, you can see that 
the pieces are rotating as well as just flying out. So this gives it a bit more of a natural feel. But that is about it. And I'm just going to kind of zoom in to somewhere that looks cool and render this. There you go. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned the basics of explosion effects and maybe it'll prove useful, maybe not. Kind of cool feature that Cinema 4D has. See you guys next time.